All right, year eight. Um, today we're going to be going through our practice test, which as you can see is a year eight mathematics test from 2015 on equations. And look, maths is one of those things where you tend to get very similar sort of questions over the years. So this will give you a pretty good guide as to what to expect. Nothing, uh, this, this has all of the skills that you need. For example, equations with brackets, equations with fractions, the worded sort of problems, they're going to be in another separate test. But because we're going to be going on camp and there's going to be all these sort of things, that's sort of going to happen after camp. Okay, so we'll be do we're learning that, learning, finishing off the chapter, and then we'll be uh, doing some more wordy sort of problems and having a more application style test. But this is the skills. Let's get started. The solution to the equation, we're going to be working um, on, on these as quickly as possible. And look, guessing and checking, 2t is equal to 28, t is equal to 14. Pretty straightforward stuff. And, and uh, so I'm not going to spend too long spending on that. Let's change the thickness, though. We probably want to change the thickness to maybe, maybe that, I think. Okay. All right. Now, uh, over here, we've got 10 minus x is equal to 3. Now, a lot of you can actually just do that by guessing and checking. What subtracting, by subtracting, that's 7. Although, what we could do is we could subtract 10 from both sides. Okay, and then I'm going to have minus x is equal to minus 13. And then, of course, dividing both sides by negative 1, by negative 1 is going to be x equals 13. Okay, so, so but I would say almost there... Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. My bad. So what have I done? I've done. Uh, I've done three minus ten is is negative seven, isn't it? So so dividing both sides by one is x is equal to seven. I've got to stop doing this too fast. Maybe it's because it's a last period as well. Starting with the equation x equals five, which new equation results from subtracting four from both sides? So we've got x is equal to five. You really need to write this out. So if I'm subtracting 4 from this side and I'm subtracting 4 from this side, that's going to give me x minus 4 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, that's going to give me just 1, which means that the answer is going to be C. Now, um, we now need to solve for B. We've got uh, 4 minus 3B is equal to minus 8. What's the furthest thing from the, from the B? It's so we need to subtract 4 from the from the first go. And that's going to leave us with minus 3b is equal to minus 12. And, of course, you could probably work out that, oh, look, I've got the negatives. The two negatives would cancel out, if you like. Or 3b is equal to 12. b is equal to 4. You don't need to show any working in multiple choice. So I don't, I'm not necessarily going to go through every step with you. Okay, I'll go through every step with you. Um, in the short answer for sure, which the following is a solution once again. So, we've, so we want to solve this equation here, which means that we're going to add one to both sides, and that's going to be 3x is equal to 6, which would give me x is equal to 2, wouldn't it? Now I've got a fraction over here, and just, just quickly, when you have a fraction, that that is divided by 8 and also times by 3. So you can do a few things, but first of all, what we could do is I want to cancel out the divide by 8 by, by, by timesing both sides by 8. Okay, that's actually going to get rid of the fraction. So what we're going to have left is 3a is equal to 3 times 8 is 24, but it's negative 24. Dividing both sides by 3, 24 divided by 3 is 8, but it's a negative number. So negative, negative 8 is the answer there. Negative 8. Now, whenever you're, you have a question like this, you can do one of two things. You can divide the brackets. Uh, sorry, you can expand the brackets. Or you could divide through by 2. Beth, are you, are you tuning in here? Thanks. Okay. So let's do, now, just quickly, 2 times y is 2y. And also, though, 
a lot of people, they don't expand the second one correctly. Two times four is eight, but of course that means it's minus eight because it's a positive times a negative is equal to ten. And now we're simply just solving that equation. So we're adding eight to both sides, adding eight to both sides. If two y is equal to eighteen, you have guessed it. Y is equal to nine. <coughs> what is the solution to this equation? Well, first of all, whenever you've got a, a, the prime numerals on both sides, you have to work out, to avoid negatives, which one is largest, okay? And so in this case, they're both positive numbers, so that makes it easier. It's a bit different with negative numbers. But as you can see, the largest one is 3w. So what we mean, what, what we do is we leave that 3w there and we subtract w from both sides. If I subtracted w from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we're going to have 2w minus 7 on the left-hand side, and then, of course, that w disappears on the right-hand side, and we have now 11. And now, it's just like any other problem. We're going to add 7 to both sides, add 7 to both sides, and then that's going to give us 2w is equal to 18. You know the last step. 2 times 9 gives us 18. So the answer is nine. Okay, a couple of worded problems. If eight more than twice a number is a is seven. So what we're going to call that number x. Okay, now twice that number is two x, isn't it? And eight more than that is plus eight. And is seven means basically that equals seven. So it's really just turning these words into an so 2x plus 8 equals 7. To me, it looks like the answer would be A. And similarly, if y is tripled, so that y is tripled, 3y, and subtracted from 10. So that means it's 10 minus 3y. Very good. The, the result is equal to 16. So we have to first of all come up with the, with the equation, and now we need to solve it. Now, um, once again, let's do the thing which is the furthest away. That 10 is furthest away from that y, so we're going to subtract 10. That's going to give us minus 3y is equal to 6. And then, of course, we're dividing both sides by minus 3. And if I divide both sides by minus 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And, of course, it's minus 2. Y is equal to minus 2, which gives us an answer of... C. Are there any questions so far? That's the multiple choice done. As you can see, though, you really need to do a little bit of working. You don't get the mark for the working, but if you don't, you're more or less guessing. Okay? All right, so then we're, we're now looking into the short answer questions, and, of course, you can't use a calculator for any of these. Um, it says here, if A equals 2, decide whether the following equations are true. Now, if you, an equation is only true if the left-hand side, so, so if the left-hand side, I'm going to write that, if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So if you have some contradiction there, um, something that doesn't make sense, then it means that that equation therefore must be false. So if we have a look here, we're, we're substituting A equals 2 into all of these. So I'm going to just do a 7, and I'm going to replace it with a little bracket, 2 is equal to 8 plus 3 times 2. Now, on the left-hand side says that it's 7 times 2 is 14. 8 plus uh, 6 is equal to also 14. So, therefore, what we can say is we're just indicating that it's true. And in the test, if you say T for true, that's fine. I'll, I'll know it's T. Okay? The same thing over here. We've got 10 times 2. 2 minus 4, please use those brackets, all right? It's just an indication that you're substituting A for 2 is equal to 6 times 2. 10 times 2 is 12 minus 4. Oh, I don't know about that because 12 minus 4, does that equal 12? No, it doesn't. So good old F for false. And let's...
Um, so, oh, sorry, 10 times, so it's 10 times, in actual fact, it's 10 times 2, which is 20, and 20 minus 4 is, and 6 times 2 is 12. So my apologies, but 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 as you can see here, this is 16 is equal to 12. Well, that's that's a contradiction. So so I was trying to do that too fast. It's still false, okay? But that's just my bad. It always happens at the end of the day when my brain doesn't work, okay? And also when I have three or four girls having conversations at once. All right, because I'm trying to do this this uh, test as quickly as possible and explain it at the same time. Now, 12 times 2 plus 4 is equal to 15 times 2 minus 2. Let's work out the left-hand side. 12 twos are 24, plus 4 is 48. Thir that's going to be, uh, sorry, plus 4 is 28. 15 times 2 is 30 minus 2. Now, does 28 equal 28? Yes, it does. So, therefore, a big fat T for true. Okay, so two of those equations are true. One is false. False. You should be able to get those marks by simply substituting and, and be able to work out those sort of things and using your times tables and things. But of course, you'll make calc if you're making calculation errors by maybe doing things too fast, like I was doing, or you simply do don't multiply 12 by 2 correctly, then you might run into some problems. Okay, we're going to solve a fair few equations here, but these a lot of these are one-step or two-step problems. So what we're going to do is the first one is a one-step problem. So we're adding 8 to both sides. Okay, you can just check these almost, but, but I want to see some working. Show all necessary working out, please. So I don't want you to just guess and check. I want to see what the process is. I'm not worried about if you necessarily get the answer wrong. I'm, I'm concerned about the process because if you understand the process, you're going to go, get better and better at this each year. Okay, so that is y is equal to 13. Please, I want a clear answer. Once again, more one-step problem. The opposite of minus 6 is plus 6. Okay, so a plus 6 is for both sides. That gives us k is equal to 10. No problem at all, hopefully with those ones. Now, I'm, div I'm multiplying by minus 5j, so we're going to divide by minus 5, and we're going to divide by minus 5. Please show that working, that step of working. I will give you half a mark if you do that, and then you do the calculation incorrectly, okay? So what we're left with is if I divide minus 5 by minus 5, that leaves me with j in this case, okay, because minus 5 divided by minus 5 is 1, and five divide, 35 divided by minus 5 is minus 7. Now we're looking at some two-step problems. You can see here the thing furthest away from the 2a is the 3. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides first. And that's going to be 2a is equal to 12. And then, of course, that's fine. If you just go straight to a is equal to 6, I'll let you, I'll let you do that. I know that you know that 2 times 6 is 12. All right. Well, now we've got some negatives. So uh, now we need to uh, be a little bit careful. We need to first of all add 4 to both sides, which leaves us with negative 3w is equal to 12. Dividing both sides by negative 3, though, dividing both sides by negative 3 is going to give us not just 4, it's negative 4. Positive divided by negative is not good. It's not right, Ruby. Okay. The thing furthest away from the 4D is the plus 10. So we need to do the inverse of that, which is minus 10. Now we've got 4D is equal to, be careful, we've got minus 26 minus another 10. Okay, so think about your number line. If you're subtracting minus 26, it's becoming, it's even less, more, it's even more negative. So the answer to that is 4D is equal to minus 36, dividing by 4 gives us 9, but we know it's going to be negative. So D is equal to minus 9. All right, more negatives over here. The furthest thing from D is, uh, is sorry, from 
e is 27, so we're subtracting 27, and we're subtracting 27 from this side as well. Now that's going to leave us with minus 3e, and on the right hand side, 18 minus 27. Well, if I subtract 18, that takes me to zero. Then I've got nine left, so it's going to be negative nine. Now, as you can see here, if you have a negative 3e is equal to negative nine, well, in actual fact, those negatives, you could almost you could actually cancel those out if you wanted to. Or, but really what you're doing is dividing both sides by negative three. So therefore, e is equal to not negative three, it's positive three. All right, the furthest thing from uh, 3n is 23, so we're subtracting 23 from both sides, subtracting 23 from both sides. That's going to give us 21 is equal to minus 3n. And I know that if I've got a negative, a positive divided by a negative, it has to be a negative. 21 divided by 3 is 7, so therefore n is equal to negative 7. Quite repetitive these, but look, 15 marks there. If you can, if you can nail this stuff, then that just in itself, those ones that we've been doing, 15 marks, plus these true and false things, there's 21 marks there. You could pass your test by simply getting everything right on that page, couldn't you? Yeah? So, so I think it's really important that you focus on, on, on this, and I'm really confident that if you do revise for your test thoroughly and go over this test again with the YouTube video and stopping and pausing and having a go yourself, make a mistake, go back, correct your mistake, I do think that you'll do a lot better. Okay. Now, um, the thing the furthest away from 7F or minus 7F is 4, so we need to subtract 4. These are getting quite repetitive, aren't they? Minus 7f is equal to 25, take 4 is 21. And if you went straight to the answer, that's fine. But just remember, 21 divided by 7 is 3. But it's going to be what? Negative 3. Very good. Okay. So we've just done 21 marks on that page plus 10. We've done 31 marks out of how many marks? Let's have a look out of 60. So so if you can nail that, all of that stuff, you would have passed your test, okay? But look, then we start getting into the slightly harder things with fractions. And can I say this? That you need to really revise over this stuff, okay? Really need to revise over this stuff. Because first of all, you see here there's this division and stuff, and usually we've got to get rid of the division and, and stuff or let's look at bod mass, okay? Bod mass. We need to get rid of the addition and subtraction first when solving. We're, 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 when we're evaluating, we're evaluating the brackets downwards like so. But when we're solving, we're going up. We're going up and solving these. So what we have here is we have uh, x over 3 plus 7. So you need to subtract 7 from both sides. That is so important. You need to subtract 7 from both sides because then you don't have these uh, this fraction as, as well. So we subtract 7. So that leaves us with x over 3 is equal to 8. Now I've dealt with my addition and subtraction. Now I've got division and multiplication. You can see here that x is divided by 3. Are you listening, Emma? You, you're good? You're good? Okay. So what's the opposite of divide by 3? Times by 3. Very good. Okay. So we, that's going to leave us with x is equal to 8 times 3, which is 24. Done. Now, the same thing. You can see that we've got 2x divided by 5. We've got this fraction here. We've got to deal with the addition and subtraction first, though. So what we've got is we've got to add 16 to both sides. I'm telling you now, many students, they start multiplying by 5 and doing all sorts of things. Ruby, you had a question. Yes, there could be. Absolutely. Yeah, there could be variables on both sides. Yep, with fractions. Absolutely. And that would be the harder ones. Absolutely. 
All right. Now, we add 16. So that leaves us with 2x over 5 is equal to minus 10 plus 16 is equal to 6. Now I could do a number of things. I could do, we'll, we'll break it up. At the moment, we've got, it's divided by 5 and it's also times by 2. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cancel out. I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to divide by 5. I'm going to cancel that out by times in the right, both left and right by 5. Now that leaves me with 2x is equal to, so that cancels out the 5, is equal to 30. And look, now that we've, we've got that far, you can just write the answer. 2 times 15 is equal to 30. So if you just went straight to that, I would have no, no issues with that at all. Okay, x is equal to 15. Now, this is, this is different though. Can I just say, there's a little invisible bracket here. Okay, all of this is divided by 7. So we have to deal with the brackets last. So in, in order to deal with the brackets last, you, what people try to do is they add 16 to both sides. They do this, they add 16 to both sides. And that is, that is just wrong, okay? You, you will, you will, it's a common mistake. I can guarantee you that seven or eight of you will probably still do it in the test, but it is wrong because there's that, that 6D minus 16 is divided by seven. That means there's actually a bracket there. So we can't, we can't just get rid of that bracket. We get rid of the bracket last, okay, bod mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to times both sides by seven, okay? So we've got to times by both sides by seven. So that's what we're going to do, times by seven. Now, surprise, surprise, and I'm going to leave the bracket here. What that means is that on the left-hand side, we've cancelled out the fraction, and 8 times 7 is 56. So now, now all of a sudden, I've just got this bracket, but really, we've got no divide. So I can actually just add 16 now. So I can now add 16 to both sides. Add 16. That gives me 6D is equal to 72. And D is the times tables. What times 6 gives me 72? 12. Well, they're cool bananas. I'm all happy. All right. Now, as you can see, though, I, I would be doing this in your test, actually. When you get a question like this, put a little bracket around here because that's going to remind you that you really can't deal with that until the fraction has been dealt with. I think so, as a, real, as a rule of thumb. So that, that will remind you not to do the crazy mistake of adding 16 or, in this case, Minus in 12. It's, you just can't do it. It's not going to work. Because let's let's break this down as a fraction. This is 12 divided by 4 minus 8a divided by 4. That's technically what it is. So you can't, you can't just simply subtract 12 because that 12 is actually divided by 4. We need to deal with, so I'm going to rub that out. I'm going to rub that out. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Just trust me. So we're times in both sides by 4. So that's going to give me 12 minus 8a is equal to 11 times 4 is 44. Now the, the thing furthest away from the, uh, from the 8a, negative 8a, is 12. So we need to subtract 12. Subtract 12. Girls, I see quite a few of you without a pen. You're not, like, I'm assuming you've got your test with you. Alouette, do you have your test with you? Yep. Have you got it right? Are you checking if you got it right? Okay. All right. Because I'm not sure if this is just a chill session. Let's just watch Mr. Underwood do all the work. Okay. You should be – the whole point of doing this is that we're, we're reviewing over our mistakes. Okay. We're reviewing over your working. All right. It's probably fair to say that all of you – might, might have made some mistakes. Some of you might not have even finished anywhere near on time, okay? Might might have even had half the test to go, all right? That's not going to help you for Wednesday. All right, so I'm going to subtract 12, so that gives me minus 8a is equal to 44 subtract 12 is 32. Now, look, if you went, if you went straight from there to the answer, that's okay. We know that 8 times 4 is 32, but... Negative 8 times negative 4 is positive 32, isn't it? So therefore, A is equal to 
negative four. I'll be happy if you if you as long as you show me all those key steps and you went straight for there, I'd be I'd be happy. You'd get full marks. Okay, now we're expanding brackets, and sometimes we might have them on both sides. When you whenever you're expanding brackets, my advice is expand the bracket down, and then you've got a two or three step problem. Okay, but be careful. You've got to expand the brackets in primitive law three times two t and three times minus five. So three times two t is six t, and three times five is fifteen. So that's minus fifteen, and then that is equal to forty-five. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add fifteen to both sides, add fifteen to both sides, and then that's going to give me six t is equal to sixty. C is equal to 10. Done. You'll get your full marks that way. For, look, you'll get one mark for the answer. There's one mark. That was out of three. You'll get one mark for, for sort of doing this, for expanding the brackets. One mark here. And then there's going to be sort of marks there for showing me your, your working inverse operations. Okay? Once again, expand the brackets. You could also divide both sides by seven if you wanted to. But I'm going to suggest often it's a really good thing to expand the brackets. So that's going to be 35D uh, plus 42 um, is equal to minus 63. Now, the furthest thing is the 42, so we're going to subtract 42. We're going to have some uglier numbers here. 35D is equal to, uh, what's that, 105, negative 105. Now, as it turns out, 35 times 2 is 70, plus another 35, 105. So, therefore, D is equal to what? Negative 3. Very good. Make sure you get your positive and negatives right. Finally, 2 times 5n is 10n minus 2, because it's 2 times minus 1 is equal to 3. Now we add 2 to both sides, adding 2 to both sides. That's going to be 10n is equal to 5. n is equal to 5 over 10, but I want you to simplify that to a half. That's right. You might lose a half mark if you left it at 5 over 10. Working and simplify. All right, are there any questions so far, girls? No. Nah. Okay, well, I will I will push on then. Oh, this is the last page, is it? Okay, good, good. Now, just, just going to show, now, I've explained this, and it's still taken me with explanation and stuff. It's still taken me a good 25 minutes at least. So what, what I'm trying to say to you, though, is you really need to be careful with time. You need to know what you're doing because if you're thinking too much about how you're going to do it, then you're going to run out of time, all right? So you really need to, as I said, watch over this video, pause it, try the questions again. I'm going to email you the test after I finish this video, all right? And you need to print it off tonight and try it as revision, sorry, maybe tomorrow in preparation for your test on Wednesday, okay? And I'm quite confident if you do that, you'll do very well. All right. So we have got equations with pronumerals on both sides. My, now, can I just ask someone here? Can I just ask someone here? What what do we do when we've got pronumerals on both sides? Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Talking to the microphone. All right. So Emma. Whoa. Okay, Emma, what are you doing? What are you doing with equations on both sides? Oh, sorry, uh, pro numerals on both sides. Talking to the microphone. Um, so you subtract out um, the number that's lower with the prime number. Okay, good. Okay, so you're saying that you're subtracting what? 4x. Okay, so you're subtracting 4x on both sides. That is correct. Very good. Okay, so you're going to talk me through this now. So that, that's going to cancel out the 4x on that side, isn't it? So we're left with 24. We plus three to both sides. Very good. Okay, so that gives me 
27 is equal to 3x. So x is equal to 9. 9. Very good. Very, 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 very good. Well done. Now, girls, we'll just finish this off because obviously don't want this to go forever. I want you to have a little bit of time to revise for yourselves. Now, 3 times 3f is what? 9f. And what's the next expression? Plus 3. That's right. 3 times 1. A lot of people just, just write plus 1. You can't do that, can you, Kiara? No, you cannot. Now, over here, th this is an extra step because, of course, first of all, we've got to expand the brackets and then we've got to simplify. So 7 times 2f is 14f and 7 times 9 is 63. Now, we have to ask ourselves, which one is the biggest value of f? 14. So we leave that there and we need to subtract 9f from both sides. Don't we? Okay, so we subtract 9f from both sides. That gives us 3 is equal to 5f plus 63. Now, what do we do now? Minus 63. You got it. Well done, Emily. Minus 63. So what does that leave us with on the left-hand side, Emily? Minus 60. 3 minus 63. So if you subtract 3, that takes you to 0. Then you've got another 60 to go, don't you? Negative 60 is equal to 5f. And 5 times something gives me 60. What's that? 5 times 12? So the answer, though, is because it's 5 times something gives me negative 60. So that must be negative 12. Very good. F is equal to negative 12. Make sure you put your answer there quite clearly. You could highlight it or something like that. Just makes it so much easier to give you your full marks. Okay, now, can I just say this is a little bit of a tricky one. Because what we say is we say the greatest number. But the thing is, is that minus 6 is actually smaller than minus 3. Okay? Because minus, think about the number line. Think about the number line. These are negative numbers. Here's negative 3. Here's negative 6. Which one's greater, negative 3 or negative 6? Negative 3. So that's the one that has to stay there. And by doing that, that means that you avoid with negative numbers. So what we're going to do is this negative 3, this guy's going to stay here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of minus 6h, which is plus 6h. And that's, that's going to mean that we don't have to deal with negatives. Plus 6h, so we're going to add 6h to both sides. Now that's going to be 21 minus 3h plus 6h. What's that? plus 3h. That's right. And then, of course, that's e equal to 6. The thing furthest away is the 21, so we need to subtract 21. We need to subtract 21, and that's going to leave us with 3h is equal to negative 15. So, therefore, h is equal to what, girls? Negative 5. All right. So, we've done that in sort of Five minutes, half an hour. Well, let's have a look. How long has it been? 33 minutes and 45 seconds. Now, girls, what I'm going to suggest is that this is about the standard of your test. There might be a couple of little surprises, but at the same time, it's these are the skills that you're going to be tested on on Wednesday. So I'm going to remind you, you really need to not just watch this video from start to finish, you need to pause it and try this test again. Does that make sense? And practice. Yes, that's right. And practice. You've got to practice. Practice makes perfect. If you just wanted to think you can try a question once that you're really struggling with and expect to get it, that ain't going to happen. All right, I'm going to stop here. Good luck for your test, girls.